Today's speaker, um, today we have Oliver Hay, who's going to talk to us about Antifox and Antiv. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, first I want to thank you everyone for coming to my talk. So I think many of you know me, some probably not. So I'm a, a CCMB member. Uh, I'm a, my primary appointment is in the lab animal medicine, also joint appointment uh, in the department of microbiology and immunology. So we develop tools and uh, doing some bioinformatics research with often a focus on like lab animal or microbiology immunology, but uh, some tools are also uh, open and uh, broadly used by people in bio, uh, biomedical or even broader biology area. So some tools we have developed are related to ontology. So I'm going to uh, give you uh, First, some introduction about uh, what is ontology. I think most of you know, right? Like gene ontology is so famous, everyone is using it. And uh, ontology tools and how you develop ontologies. And then I'm going to introduce the two tools for you. So one is ontofox, one is ontob. So ontofox is more focusing on supporting ontology reuse. So you can extract, for example, turns from gene ontology and uh, dump into your own ontology or use it for some other purposes. So onto B is more like uh, you find the term, you display, and you have some many nice features that I'm going to introduce you later. And then I'm going to give some discussion in the end. So let's begin. So what is ontology? Well, I think you all know. But anyway, so onto uh, really uh, means being. So Ontology, of course, all ontology is the science, right? So ontology means uh, the science of being. So it's an interdiscipline uh, between philosophy and the science. So like a being, you know, like a, so you can go back to probably Aristotle, who created the first system of ontology in the form of an ontology of substances. So what about uh, how can we classify those substances? So it's kind of very old, but uh, meantime, it's very young science. And uh, the gene ontology just uh, was released about uh, 2000, and now thousands of people are citing it. And from, I would say, uh, the so huge success of gene ontology, and we are looking for all kinds of ontologies and uh, to support the different areas of research. I will introduce more later. So let's continue to the definition of the ontology. So this is um, uh, roughly a definition. I think it's more like a many terms in the science, like a gene or some other things. It's often harder to, to define one definition that everyone agree. But anyway, this is something I have been sticking with for many years. The consensus based uh, can show the vocabularies of terms and relations <coughs> between terms. So it means terms and also relations between terms. So when we say a person and a human, so they are terms, right? So when we say a person is a human, so now there is a relation, the two terms. So that is is a, is, so this is actually, we talk about the relation, you really infer some knowledge here. So ontology can represent the knowledge. So we can talk more later. And uh, another key point of, the ontology is like uh, you have to describe them in terms of uh, formal language so that uh, uh, basically more like uh, computers can understand it, really. Because a human can understand many things, right? But uh, uh, nowadays, we really like to have computers understand it so you can handle big data. And the ontology, for sure, can support uh, uh, reasoning. So you can do all kinds of reasoning. And I'm going to show you some examples later. OK, so this is a slide that summarizes some uh, applications about ontology, like naming things. Of course, you name it, right? Like uh, what is human or taxonomy, human, uh, mice, those kind of things. Knowledge base, so for example, the uh, foundational model of anatomy. So this is really an anatomy about a regular, a normal, uh, people, a uh, person, human person. Can I claim credit? 
Yeah. Because I helped develop that. So <laughs> I, ha I helped develop that with Cornelius Ross at the University of Washington. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, uh, yeah from so, uh, Washington. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very well uh, uh, known. Yeah. And uh, but now there are different kinds of anatomy ontologies, but this is uh, still a classical one. And gene ontology, I don't have to say much. Biopacks means uh, biological pathway data exchange. So, so it can be used for exchanging <coughs> and data analysis and uh, natural language processing, and information integration. And nowadays, actually, and even uh, just recently, you can see many like uh, initiatives. And I uh, recently uh, like uh, released uh, some like RFA. They ask for information about how we can put together like uh, how we can you know support uh, metadata like data integration and the, their standards and so, all those kind of areas actually involve ontology so they definitely ontology will go from just the classical I mean the class level like uh, naming things uh, going to more <coughs> integration of experimental data so one area of ontology is called OBO Foundry Ontology uh, you know, Initiative. So OBO means uh, open biological and bio, bio, biological and biomedical ontology. So initially there was an uh, OBO format. So the gene ontology was, I think, still now uh, developed under the so-called OBO, OBO format. So the OBO Foundry basically uh, support uh, an initiative of developing different ontologies under the core principles, like everyone follow. Like uh, for example, many of here, like open collaboration. So open, open means uh, you, know, you have to use an open source, uh, so license. So it means uh, you develop it, but uh, you really cannot uh, use it for money, right? So and everyone can develop, everyone can contribute. And a lot of others, <coughs> and then the Obo Foundry paper uh, published many years ago has been cited uh, thousands of times now. And the gene ontology actually is a part of the Obo Foundry ontology. So I want, yeah, many years ago, uh, I got a, a grant, an R1 grant, uh, to develop a legacy ontology. So so everything actually started at that moment. So we try to develop you know, the legacy ontology by following some like OBO foundry principles. And then we found that we needed to develop many tools to deal with the things. And that this is something I'm going to tell you. The two tools we develop actually are derived from the, the project. So I just want to introduce briefly about the legacy ontology. So the VO is an ontology uh, in the area of uh, the vaccine, oh, sorry, the, the vaccine and the vaccination. So it's Obo Foundry Library Ontology. So we follow those kind of principles. So it use a basic uh, formal ontology as its upper level ontology. So I'm going to introduce what is the buffer uh, later with more detail. So basically, it's a very small ontology. It's more like, OK, we like to, if we want to build up an ontology of the whole world, everything, right? You need to build up at the top level, so it uh, basically covers all the de all the kind of abstract or philosophical level terms. Hi, and then uh, if everyone buy buys it, everyone follow it, then you can start to put all the pieces here and there, and uh, then for example, vaccine can be vaccine is a material, right? It can be somewhere there. I can show you examples later, and uh, you will understand more. So it's developed by primarily uh, Dr. Barry Smith, also my collaborator in, in the Buffalo University. And we have uh, also uh, many collaborations. Yeah, it's primarily uh, <coughs> led by my department, my, my lab. And uh, we are also part of OB, so we get a lot of involved with OB. So OB means ontology for biomedical investigations. Now it has been used uh, or co-developed by more than 20 or about uh, 20 communities, uh, including microarray community and imaging community and, and the biomedical uh, like uh, clinical 
the uh, informaticus community. So many many people are developing it. So it's uh, very popular now. And uh, in terms of the um, the metadata like uh, integration, and uh, often OB is, is used. And uh, why it was developed initially? Like we all know, for microarray, you know Miami, right? It's more like a minimal information for microarray analysis. And then they try to develop some ontology to transfer the the minimal information. It's more like a tags to ontology. And then many other groups they feel like, oh, we need to do the same thing. So they all kind of feel like, oh, since everyone's doing it, you know, there will be bigger overlap. No one the join force. This is why OB you know, came out. And I was uh, later, I, I later also joined OB, and I'm a, a representative of the vaccine community in OB. So gene ontology and IDO. OK, so I just give you more information how really an ontology is, is developed, at least in our case. I think that for gene ontology, it's the same thing. So basically, for 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 our like a vaccine, so this is more like a, a material entity. So if we look for the basic formal ontology, it's something called the continuing. So continued is more like a, you if you show a movie, you have a, like a, every moment you have one one shot, and uh, so this is more like a, the short, the static one, and uh, and uh, time independent. So you have material which, which is independent of time. And so then you can see a vaccine is a material, but it's also a process material. It means if you get a, some uh, like a mosquito bite and uh, uh, there is uh, some virus there and you get an infection and then you get recovered. So you get immune. It's not a vaccine, right? Because uh, that one is a natural uh, infection. It's not a processed material by human. So you can see, OK, how we defined. And then you can go. So this is more like a, it's called a, it's a association, it's a hierarchy. So like RB31 is a, a Bursala Bottas vaccine, and which is a Bursala vaccine. So you go like a, everything go is. So in gene ontology, before they had like a, the is association, they also, the hierarchy also include a part, part of association. Like a, so the hierarchy tree also include a part of, but uh, basically uh, like open foundry as a whole suggests that no, no the hierarchy should be ease of. So they basically uh, change the geontology display and, uh, and the, uh, the generation. So you know, like all the hierarchy should be ease of association. <coughs> and also there's a term called axiom. So in ontology, axiom means you make uh, the relations among terms. So those relations doesn't have to be its association. Like this one is a is a is a like its association, right? But you can see it has a part. Then you can have you can make uh, some rules. So those means relation and those relations and those are the class terms. So you can make uh, so instead of just a, a tree, you can go across your siblings and brothers, right? Go across a different level to make the relation. So in overall it's really an ontology, it's really a network among things. So not only material, it also can process, can, ontology can also define processes. So like uh, in gene ontology, right, we really have uh, three components. So one is called a biological process. So one is molecular function. So molecular function is more like uh, in, under the buffer, it's more like a, a function of uh, molecules. And, and the biological and, and the cellular component is the site of the material, where material can stay. So it can define, ontology can define processes. Like for example, in VO, we can define those kind of different processes. And we often, very specific, for example, we, we differentiate vaccination and immunization. So we are really often we get confused and we, or we just use them anyway. Like, uh, or same, but the real vaccination is to administer the vaccine to inside the host. The immunization involves the whole process after vaccination to get immune. So the whole uh, process of getting immune. So we differentiate them in a way which is it's very specific. 
and those are the axioms. The equivalence means uh, it's necessary and sufficient uh, information. Once you get the information, you can see, okay, if uh, my thing qualified on, on, on these axioms, I can see this thing is this. So, so yeah, in ontology, you have so-called necessary and sufficient definitions. And this is another branch of the buffer. The occurrent, occurrent means uh, you know, time dependent. So process is time dependent. So basically, the whole basic form of ontology has two branches. One is uh, the time dependent occurrent. Another one is the time independent, like a, a kind of, uh, a con uh, the continuant. Yeah. So this is just some basic information. And the ontology can also be used to define a whole experiment, basically. So for example, we can define the whole vaccine protection assay. So we can see, OK, they have three processes. And each process involves those material and those you know, linkage. So really, this is for mathematics. This often is more like modeling or for mathematics, right? For ontology, really, those things, you can see that they are tags. But internally, they are just 0, 1, 0, 1. They are more like a, like a, the computer understandable terms. And you can link things all together. So this is a part one of the three use case for the OB paper. And now it's also really well cited. OK, so really, how to develop an ontology? So gene ontology really uses the so-called OBO. It's very simple. You don't have to have much background to use it. So OW is a more advanced one. It has more features than OBO, but uh, you need some background. So OW really means web ontology language. So it's really starting from the middle. So W-O-L, but then they change it to R, to O-W-L. The default uh, editor is called Apology, uh, developed uh, in Stanford by uh, Dr. Mark Musen's lab. And you can use it for uh, ontology editing, for reasoning, and for the even now include uh, Sparkle and many other features. So you can have plugins, you can do many other things. And how to store ontology? So we can use uh, RDF triple store <coughs> to store ontology. So RDF, so, so both R and RDF, they come from XML, right? So, so uh, R is more advanced. It's based on, it can be based on RDF. So RDF means uh, resource uh, description framework. So basically, an RDF is uh, described in triples. So a triple means a subject, predicate, and uh, object. So for example, like uh, I am a person, so so I subject predicate M person object. So it's basically just a uh, you know a sentence. So so what other I'm uh, speaking in the in the room, right? So you can say okay, yeah, I'm a person and I speaking. You can say it's a location of the place, it's a room. So you can you can basically use triple to describe anything. Well, sometimes it's a very complicated way, but uh, at least the computer can understand. So RTF triple stores can also store our ontologies. So if you have an ontology like uh, with those kind of uh, uh, RTF triple store system, like Oracle something, so they can automatically accept our format and transform into something like uh, RDF format and store it. But basically, our format is, is, uh, is RDF format. And our format has more rules. OK, I think uh, that is some basic uh, information. Then now I want to go for the more like the tool side. So while we have you know, those basic uh, information, when I you know, was uh, looking for the vaccine ontology development, so what I had is the apology and some knowledge. Uh, but uh, when we develop it, uh, so OBO basically support a, a way you reuse instead of uh, reinvent the wheel, trying to reuse existing terms. So for example, if gene ontology has something like a process or metabolic uh, pathway, so if your vaccine ontology wants you something like that, you don't reinvent the wheel, you don't, you don't basically generate your own term, you just import the term to, to your site. So then if anyone do the same thing, 
then you can support the real estate, the data integration, right? So you can import terms as, as much as possible. So how to import terms? So if it's a small like a buffer, so you can, you, you can use in our format, you can have some uh, like command, like import. So you can import the whole buffer. But uh, what about the geontology that have thousands of terms? If you want to import, you don't want to import the, the whole geontology, right? So you just want to import a few terms, for example, for your own case. But then you copy paste, it's very tedious. So how to import, so the question is how to import a few terms. So another one is how to display and query terms. So yeah, there are many tools like by a portal and, uh, and some others. I'm going to give you more detail. When I talk about the onto B, uh, it can be somehow not you know, fitting to our need. So uh, with all those kind of questions, we are developing tools like, uh, to address. And then once we feel like we can do it, and still many people can use it for their own benefit. So we release them as a web based tool, and then many people now are using it actually. They have become very popular now. So, so my lab over the past few years have been developing many tools. They are all like uh, here ontology rated. So onto focus is to reuse, let's say gene ontology, you want to reuse existing terms. So onto B is to link, it's like the link data, this is a link server for ontology terms. You can link all those terms. And we also developed the RDF triple store which now is used as the default uh, RDF triple store for all the, for most at least, OBO foundry ontologies. And we have some other tools I can introduce to you in the end when I talk about the uh, discussion. So on the focus. So again, let's see how, when we talk about the import individual terms, you know, from a big ontology to a small to a subset and then to your own ontology. So initially, it was a, there was a strategy there. It's called a myriad strategy. It's developed by the by the OBO by the OB OB developers just before I, I joined the OB. So when I there they you not know, so the myriad was discussed. So basically, the myriad means minimal information to reference external ontology term. So what it does is like, uh, you know, if you want to uh, import uh, some gene ontology term, you get the ID, you get the label, you you tell your program where to put it where, then just uh, some minimal information, and uh, you can get it and use it. Uh, I can tell you more information. Uh, so it's a very simple way. So, and uh, then that time, uh, you get the ID, you get the label, you get the, you, you tell it where it's located. So those kind of in minimal information can be done manually, right? And uh, they even develop some very kind of list to program. It's very hard to do. Uh, so we, we like the, the idea as well. So we develop something called uh, autofocus. So autofocus basically is initially trying to uh, trying to use uh, like uh, to implement the mirror to get all the turns outside but uh, we're trying to also do more so it can implement the mirror principles basically to get the minimal information about the ontology turns like a uh, label and the UR, uri and the where it's located and into the ontology and we go for more we go for more information i can tell you later and it's very simple no programming needed and relatively easy to use. And this is the, the paper. And I can show you later. So basically, what you can do is like, uh, it can, um, it, it, uh, it can get the individual turns, you know, can get the, you need to give some UIs and some labels, and basically it can extract the term automatically and put it into your own ontology. But it can also do more. It can include more terms, many terms, and also not only the term you need, but also because you, in order to get the logical ready and get the reasoning or performing well, you need to probably get more terms. It's something called the modularization, and the mirror by itself cannot do it. And we develop the program. We can basically get all those kind of terms that are used 
or that are needed to define the subset of your terms. And, and we can also get the annotations. I think, that, yeah, some uh, example is, will be helpful. So here is an example, and I can definitely show you the example here. Uh, have a demo. So basically, if we want to get from NCBI taxonomy, so it has uh, about 1 million uh, taxonomy terms, right? So if we, in my ontology need some term called a human because I'm developing human vaccine. So I want to put the human into my, my ontology. I don't want to use my own term. I want to use the human. But I know the NCBI taxonomy between human and something called organism or eukaryote, there are 27 layers, right? So you, you can do different ways. You can put a human directly on the organism or, or on the eukaryote, or you want to you know, like maintain all those hierarchy so you can get all those things automatically. So what the, the certain data is like, uh, so basically you can choose the ontology So you can choose the ontology, and then you say, okay, I want to, I want to, this is my bottom level term of the ontology, the NCBI taxonomy 9606 is the idea of the homo sapiens. And then I want to put, a, I want to, the top level is the eukaryote, I want to have this one, and I want to assign this term under the OB term, this is OB term called organism. So you can just, uh, you no, know, use this very simple one, and you want to see. I want to get all the axions. You want to get from here to here, right? Some people like it this way. Get from here to here. So, so you just assign, you know, this minimal info, minimal information, and we also have a text format like this. So you basically see this is ontology, and uh, this is the bottom level term. This is top level term, and the fig, and the asserted under here. And you want to get all the axiom. So this is the minimal information. I think it's relatively very simple, right? So what you do, you see, you basically just say you you generate output, so you get all the information, and then you uh, check the information on the project. This is what uh, you, you see. So and uh, if you also you also can see I want to generate an input input file. This is an input file, you can save it. So later on you can if you want to have some any update for, or for any reason, you want to run it again, you just uh, run it. So there is uh, a version, you just uh, run an uh, input file, you can get output direct automatically. So that's more like uh, some basic uh, feature of the, of the ontology. Uh, so yeah, I will give you, so let's see. Uh, so I want to show. So this is the one. So yeah, just for example, the example one. This is exactly the, the same example I, I demonstrated. So you can have the ontology. So there are many, many ontologies there, more than 100 ontologies. So you can see, OK, I want to use a human. I want to know this is top level of the ontology. I want to assert that into some other ontology term. And you want to say, I want to use the so all intermediate, so you can get uh, the input, and you can save with this one. And then later, you can do this version, just get the output, get the, the file, and then you don't have to go through the go through the manual process, right? So if you don't want to use the whole website, there is a way you know, we, we provide for you, so you can just uh, do it in terms of software program. So this is just the show of the slide I, I, I give to you. So for the vaccine ontology, this is a, a slide, the statistics. So in our ontology, we have imported uh, for the buffer, we basically just get the whole ontology, right? But for many other terms, other ontologies, we mostly just get the pieces. Pieces here, pieces there. So we put all those pieces together. Now there is a vaccine ontology. Of course, you know, for those 
uh, specific vaccines, you need to have your own terms like uh, different vaccines. So the, so the majority is likely your own ontology. But for others, you don't want to really define those by yourself. It doesn't support the reuse, doesn't support integration, and other programs won't understand, right? So, so you basically do your own job and leave all those existing terms uh, from other ontologies there, import them and use it here. So, and it, by the way, yeah, this screenshot is generated from our own B. It's a, another tool that I'm going to introduce to you later. Okay, so so the use case. So basically, uh, we initially used it for our very ontology purpose, and we you know we imported many terms from other ontologies, right? It's something I showed you in the previous slide. But it is also very popular now for many other people to use. It has been used for developing many many other uh, ontologies. This is my old slide I didn't count. But I count this morning, like uh, if you go for Google Scholar, and there are, in the last three years, uh, there are 86 people, they cite our tool, use our tool. So if you look for Google, uh, looking for on the focus ontology, and the mostly, they are really about the tool, and there are many, many more results uh, citing the on the focus. And, I want to show you another, it's not an ontology development, another use case. So it's one thing that I know we are developing uh, the violin, the vaccine database, and we found a need to do something. So it's a project called a vaccine vector. So a vaccine vector means uh, some like a live, live attenuated virus or bacteria or fungi, they can be used as a vector to uh, express uh, 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 vaccine antigens, right? And we found many. We found many. We found uh, more than 100 uh, uh, different uh, uh, bacteria, virus, you know, and others to be used as vaccine vectors. So we want to basically generate a hierarchy about those kind of things, right? So it's not easy. If you look for the NCDI telosome, it's huge. It's about 1 million, right? 1 million. Turns, you cannot just use it. But then we use our own focus. We use something called the include the computed intermediate. So what it does, it look for, so if we have many turns, like uh, those many turns, those many strings, it look for the uh, closest ancestor. So, but if in the middle, there are many turns which are in the middle and not used in the hierarchy, it will ignore, it just go further. So it, it will it will go further. Uh, so there are many many layers of turns probably between fungi and uh, you carry out alter right maybe more than ten layers. It will ignore. But uh, if uh, if uh, some turns like uh, this one, it will look for the closest uh, uh, ancestor. So basically, it can be used to generate very nicely a hierarchy. So I can basically put all those. Uh, uh, vaccine vectors, all those organisms together and generate some some figure like this one, and there is a part of a paper which was recently accepted. So yeah, and uh, while I was working on it, I got an idea. So for our gene ontology enrichment analysis, one problem is like often you get a lot of terms which are <coughs> enriched, right? So so likely, you know, but all those terms they. You, you, sometimes you don't know the hierarchy, and they are more like all mixed. So often, for our researchers, what we do is like uh, we randomly pick. Oh, this one seems like it's interesting to my thing, to my topic. I just cite the other one. But really, one thing I think we can possibly do is to use something like on the focus. So let's say if you get the 100 uh, gene ontology terms, which are all significantly enriched, you can use our tool to basically generate a minimum. Uh, like a hierarchy, and uh, you can show uh, very well which uh, turns are. So those turns that are in which the, you know, in the slide, they will be like at the bottom level, the leaf, the leaf of the tree, right? But it can also build up, can also link all those terms all together. So you can see, oh, really, they are more like this kind of structure. So you can see in this, 
example. So you can see, okay, there are very many viruses, and it's more like in this category, right? And you can see. So, so maybe in gene ontology, you can do the same thing. You can see, okay, out of 1,000 uh, enriched gene ontology twins, now we can see, oh, really, they are focused on those branches. So it's something I feel like uh, for sure we can do, but uh, I have not done so. Okay, so that's uh, more like uh, the on top focus tool. So maybe you can you can ask me questions anytime, or you can ask me in the end. Okay, so let me go for the next one, the the on top B. So it's tool to support uh, ontology uh, browsing, query, and the linkage. So how how it how it work out? So just give some uh, basic uh, information <coughs> first. Uh, link the data. So link the data now is actually a term which is popular. It's a very uh, kind of well used in the bioinformatics field. So it's really uh, promoted by Dr. Tim Berners Lee, the inventor of the uh, WWW. So Tim gave four principles. For the link data, so basically data should be linked, right? So this is why we call it link data. So use uh, URIs to identify things. So each thing can be unique. The thing can be anything, right? Can be like a class level, like a human person, or it can be individual level or instance level, like me, right? Or like Oliver. So it can be anything. But it's better to use URIs, so then it make it like a unique, so web can recognize it. And you are and use URIs of HTTP, so you can have HTTP dot dot slash slash something. So the things can be referred and looked up. So the refer and refer to and looked up is called a dereference. So you can dereference. So dereference a human or dereference me. So, or the reference the patient, right? Then it comes to the clinical informaticus. So it can be dereferenced by people or, or software. And then you can provide useful information about a thing, that its URI is dereferenced and uh, using standard format. So basically, team specifically mentioned the RDF. So you can use RDF because RDF is perfect fit to do something like uh, uh, linking different things uh, in terms of more like a uh, a knowledge representation. And you can also include links to other URIs. So all the things are linked all together now. So this is something we call the linked data. And there's another term called the linked open data. So it means that everything, the data should be open, not like for commercial use. So it's linked data and linked open data. So it can be LD or LOD. So what about linked data for ontologies? Can all the ontology terms or ontologies be linked? So this is the question that the ontology B is trying to address. So, so ontology uh, term dereferencing. So before the ontology B, or many years ago, uh, so when you put something like this one, this one for sure is URI, and it's using HTTP. So before, many years ago, this is more like a pseudo or fake ID. It's of course unique, but it doesn't mean much. So if you put this one to web browser, what you get is like, oh, website not found, the term not found. Or they just give you the whole text format, like a text version of the all file. So, so, so this term is in the middle of a huge text file, right? It's all, all format, but it's text file. So really, this is a huge issue, right? How to truly dereference the term? Well, you know, same thing applied to the link data. And how to dereference anything, right? But in this case, we see how to dereference the ontology term is an issue, you know, because you often have uh, millions. So in ontology now, you have more than you have about three million terms. You know, how to dereference all those? You cannot do it statically. So for virus ontology, initially we just do it statically. So initially there are hundreds of terms. So for each for each ID, we generate hundreds of just one file, one HTML file. Then we have hundreds of the HTML file. So whenever you have an ID, you link to the HTML file, a static file. 
well, 100 is probably still can handle it. But what about you have millions? You don't want to have millions of uh, static HTML file, right? What about any file has some update? So it's, it can be a problem. So how to deal with those issues? So the NCPO by a portal and it's a OLS, the ontology linked data service from the European, the EBI. They solve some of the issue, so they can display the terms and they can support a query. But still, they have not solved all the issues. For example, the OLS only support Obo Foundry. Even now, they cannot support the all file. And uh, so, um, so one thing is like uh, the link data. So if you have a term, you know, what you get is HTML. But uh, if you look for the Teams uh, one, you know, you better to use uh, something called uh, the RDF to introduce the information for computer to use, right? You can use HTML for people. You use RDF for computer. So what it, what they did is they they, they cannot uh, for turn they cannot uh, you know get uh, your RDF. So you have to have two versions: one is HTML version, one is RDF version. And uh, so also, if it's uh, like a geontology term, it's a really Obo Foundry. So to define a, a URL, right? There's an ontology ID. There's a prefix. This is more like a domain information. So, but for them, for like a NCBO by a portal, the URI they provide is not like this. They provide something like a by ontology, like a slash, like a. Geo, something like geontology, geo. so it is not a, it is not a, this term, this URI. No, it's just different URI. Just the, the this, just the, the last part is the same. So, so it doesn't fit it much into our need, into the robots need. So, this is why we develop some, we develop the, the onto B. So onto B actually also has some nice feature, which I think is is quite new, newly implemented. So. In order to like uh, looking for the link data, so in order to get uh, the HTML for browser, right? To get uh, the RDF for the program ready, uh, the classical way to do is to use something called uh, content negotiation. So basically, somewhere in in your file, you should say, okay, you no, know, the display of this one prefer to use HTML format, or you prefer to use RDF format. So if uh, your server see, oh, your browser see, oh, you are using this format, so you display in HTML format. Uh, if uh, your browser you know, or your server see, this this is the kind of the beginning of the file, then they use RDF format. So what we did is actually, we don't care about this. So our approach is more like, uh, so whatever, you, you know, URI, well, IRI is more like, uh, a universal version of UI, so UI use 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 the US text, and II can use some other text like Chinese text. So so you have a term you you know UI or II, so you can go to the RDF format. So if it's it's a, a website or it's a web program, then you report the, the RDF or the all format directly to the website. If it's a browser, then Automatically, the program can 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 uh, feel it, can identify it, and uh, using some trick by XSLT, then it can link to the HTML format, and browser can see. So what you can see is like a browser. When you open browser, you can you can see the HTML format. When you look for the source of the file, you see the RDF format. I'm going to show you some example later. So, but before I do it. Yeah, there is a quote. So James uh, Owen is a, a bioinformatician in Canada. So so he presented a, a, a tutorial just last month in Texas, like the international conference for biomedical ontologies uh, conference in Texas. So he put a, you know, some website, some quote here. So basically, on the B list, uh, you no, know, list uh, the, all the Global ontologies and provide some very good search and analysis tools. So some terms like this one, if you click, 
you can automatically go to owner B. Owner B can dynamically detect that one, and owner B can also provide some very good query. So if I look for for this term, so this is so basically, so the input really is uh, is is this term, this ID, right? But owner B can automatically detect and uh, and and uh, so owner B doesn't want to have a new ID. Just it's just like okay. okay you give me ID, I give you, I give you uh, the output. So what you can see in browser is HTML. You can see all the information about the term. So this is a kind of how the ontology layout, right? This is how we are the essay is located. This is axioms. And this is how many, how to use, uh, or how many other axioms have. There's a lot of information, and uh, this is uh, what other ontologies are using the term. And so basically, this is uh, internally is a, is a Spark query. So, um, okay. yeah. So you can definitely you know, click. You can click any any level. So, so it's linked. So you can, you can click any level. But let's see if you go back to any level. What you if you look for the source the source page, it is not HTML really. It is our file. It is RDF file. So if you go to the if you use your Linux like terminal, you use the curl. So you just use curl the web page the URL. What you get is, is this information. So I, I think I gave some like a thing. So if you, if you go to your browser, your terminal, you, if you type this, what you get is the, the source information. So what you get directly is idea format. So it has been very quite useful, and uh, many people are using it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So again, this is just a a, a way I, I quickly put together. It's the one I showed you. So we can also have the the on the Sparkle. So yeah, my lab also develop ontologies beside the vaccine ontology. One ontology I want to. I want to advertise is something called a gene, OGG is ontology of genes and genomes. So you will see, okay, what's different between OGG and gene ontology, right? So gene ontology is not really about a gene. I think the name is, is misleading. So it's about the gene products, something, 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 right? Molecular function, biological process, and molecular and the cellular component. But there is no, until now, a, a really ontology for real genes like for example, some uh, human TP53, right? That was none. And, and so we developed this one, and it was accepted for four dense people, uh, like a presentation uh, in the ICBO meeting. And, uh, and uh, now many people are very interested in them, want to use it. So, uh, so I just gave you a demo uh, quickly. So for example, if I click this one, Okay. So yeah, so OGG is a, it's a lot, lot, lot of like uh, so basically it contains like for human, it contains all the forty thousand hu human genes. So it introduced in a way which is very nice, and uh, it uh, includes all the information. We often get the information from the NCBI uh, resource. It also includes uh, all the gene ontology association department search. And uh, yeah, if you look for a source code, you will get uh, all the information. So, so for the query, well, we have some Sparkle query. Just give you a quick demonstration. So for example, if I want to see how many number of genes under, I mean, how many 
human pRNA gene type. So you do a, just a few lines of query. You just run it. You say, oh, really, there are 579 human pRNA there. There's another query, for example, here. So this query, oh, this query. So this query basically link the OGG with the gene ontology. And, uh, so basically what it asks is like, uh, how many mouse genes involving mitochondria DNA repair? So this mitochondria DNA repair has some gene ontology ID. So, so basically it, it looks for just a few lines. I don't have time to give, to give you the, to tell you why. But you can do a search. You can quickly find, oh, really three, three genes. So they are all, you basically all play with the, with the ontology. Okay, so I know it's time now, so I'm going to go quick. So yeah, so basically, it's just some usage. Um, yeah, it's, it's very well used, you know? Like many people are citing the onto B now. And uh, yeah, so routinely we have about 100 people for IP address using the onto B. So it was, the server was <laughs> down you know, last month. So, so there was this, so people often call me. So it's fixed now and, uh, and uh, no, yeah, it's being used by many people. So yeah, just uh, one last slide. Uh, so we are also, so we show, we show today the onto focus on onto B. Yeah, I didn't have time to show you detail, but all those tools are using our RDF triple store. We have many other tools like uh, onto dog. So it's uh, basically people call, you know, call us like, oh, you have onto animal serious to us, <laughs> so I mean, it's become convenient for us because we develop many. So on the focus is a tool which uh, you know, use, uses on the focus, but uh, it handle Excel input. So on the focus didn't handle it. And also it has some way to generate a community view of ontologies. And on the red is like, uh, so on the focus is to generate, is to get uh, turns from existing ontologies, right? And, uh, and you put it into your new ontology. What about if you want to generate a lot of new ontologies simultaneously? Like in our vaccine ontology, we, we got uh, some information like about 1,000 animal vaccines from USDA. So we want to put all the 1,000 USDA animal uh, vaccines into VO. We don't, we don't want to do it manually. So we developed the onto red. So we can basically just have Excel file as input. So we can simultaneously put all the ontologies into our vaccine ontology. So another example is like uh, the cell line ontology. So we got uh, uh, more than 1,000 uh, cell line uh, cell line information from J Japan, the Riken cell line bank. So we use our onto red to simultaneously got all those more than 1,000 cell line information to cell line ontology. So this is also one very popularly used uh, tool, what begin to be used. So you know the people just submitted. And on the bed is focusing on the experimental data analysis. It just beginning, but we show we give a, some like a poster in the ICBO meeting. So seems like it's a future focus yeah, later. Uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a field that probably you, you often don't, you, you, you don't deal with, right? It's a kind of a, more like a ontology development. But uh, I think uh, it, uh, it will become more and more uh, uh, popular because I think, uh, you know, for big data analysis, you, you do need uh, some ontology, like uh, recently, uh, the NIH, the NIAID, they have a, a, a paper. So basically, it's an effort to try to build a, a metadata a, a framework uh, to handle experimental data. So the framework is really based on the ontology. So ontology not only uh, can be used as knowledge representation, but also it can be used as a framework to guide the representation of experimental data. So once you have all those experimental data built up in using the ontology format, then all the data across 
different groups now can communicate because now they are more or less in using the same ontology format, and the ontology format can be understandable, understandable by by computers. So then we can achieve real the data integration uh, in a bigger scale. Question for you: <clears throat> Like in your ontology of genes and genomes, um, how do you deal with the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty and discovery happening constantly? Right, so you have to integrate new information and eliminate old information, right, from yeah. your ontological framework. Yeah, that's definitely a very good question. So, because the knowledge is uh, up, is updating, and uh, some uncertainty may become more certain, right. and uh, some false positive result uh, might be discovered and uh, and cor corrected. So, yeah, for the OGG, for the so we we really use. Uh, no, it has OGG. You no, know, like uh, we use the NCBI RevC gene uh, resource. So RevC now has more than ten million genes in there. So we have a pipeline like uh, running the by back end. You know, basically we get uh, data from NCBI. We change it using our ontology format as a design, and uh, so we can do a periodic update like. Uh, uh, we 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 thinking we can do probably at least a month. We want to do monthly. So if any changes, we assume that the NCBI will change. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then we can change. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because one thing is like they are they are like a gene ID is unique. Right. So they will not change. So if you change, then the gene ID, so the information is changed, but the gene ID is not changing. So yeah. it's the same same gene. So if they do think uh, the whole set is wrong, really. Definitely, there's no such gene at all. So what they did, the NCBI will do is to remove the whole gene ID, the obsolete, make it obsolete. So then our program will see, oh, yeah, it's obsolete. So it's a way to do, yeah. But uh, I think uh, by representing the NCBI resource in a way like we pre I presented here, then we can use the ontology tools to handle all those many things. And uh, later, later on, I want to also integrate uh, many other information, gene information, not only from NCBI, but maybe from Ensemble or from EBI or from other resource. So all can be linked. Yeah. So like uh, now, I'm uh, uh, publishing, I'm uh, working on a revision of a paper. Uh, together, I'm asking the pro help. So the pro is a protein ontology. So many people are using the protein ontology. So I told them, you better use the gene OGG. Because the gene and the protein, they cannot be separated, right? So every protein back end has a gene. So the so they agree, yeah. So we, we like to by doing this way to promote the, the OGG in a way, I think uh, because everything is more like a the molecular mechanism, the root cause often come to the gene level. So to build up to maintain to keep updating the OGG, I think uh, it will give us some foundation to really achieve some true integration, yeah, for different things. Like another collaboration is like the Mayo Clinic also asking our, our collaboration. So they are more focusing on the, the gene variation. So different genetic variation may cause may be associated with with different clinical disease symptoms. So they said that they like to use OEG as a framework to build up their variation ontology. Thank you, Oliver.